Hey everyone, Eric here. In today's Skill Builder, I want to show you how to find, extract, and then store for later use materials, not models, found on the 3D Warehouse. Okay, so by now, we all know how great of a resource the 3D Warehouse is. But there's some hidden features, if you look close, that can be useful in order to not just learn a little bit more about the model that you're downloading, but also see what it contains. And obviously, the topic of this skill builder is materials. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple different ways to extract the materials from a 3D Warehouse model and then decide how we want to use it for our model, whether that's using it right now or if we want to store them later and then use them as part of a collection that then can be tapped into um, at any time. So let's get to it. I've got my model here, but really what we need to do is start in 3D Warehouse. So let me go ahead and pop over to the 3D Warehouse. Um, the model that I was thinking about was one that I've seen in the past. It was a ruin that had some cool stone textures and some grasses and things like that. So I'm just gonna scroll down and find the one that I that we just saw um, on the screen that I had loaded. It's right here, it's called Ruins by Shri Yam. And I'm gonna click see more details. So something about this one, I mean, it's not the best model. I mean, it's pretty low poly, but there was some cool stone textures, a wooden bridge, some grass. And I thought, okay, maybe this is something that I can use in a, mo a similar model that I'm working on, or even just store these textures and use it later when I'm ready. So over here under the model info section of the 3D Warehouse, you'll see that the materials, you can actually click on this. So I don't know if a lot of people have done this because um, it's not something that's really obvious, but there's a little arrow here that says, hey, there's more information. So if you click this, a little, I don't know if it's a pop-up or a slide in or whatever you want to call it, basically shows up and it tells you not only the name of the material, it gives you the dimensions, the size, and it gives you a link to download. So in this case, I would just, maybe not all of them. Um, it doesn't let you download all of them. It lets you download one at a time. I'm gonna grab this wood plank or this wood board, another wood board, stone, water, water, and stone. I think the solid green colors, there's no reason to keep those. So, I'll go ahead and not download those ones. I'll X out of there. All right, if I open up my downloads folder, I can see these last files that have downloaded just now. They are SKM files. So it didn't download the actual image, it downloaded it as a SketchUp material. That's what that SKM is. So if you're not sure how to use an SKM, I wanna, um, I'll show you right now. So the SKMs actually need, they're the same materials. If I pop back over to my SketchUp model and I open up my materials browser and I come over here to any of these materials that come as your with your default set. So basically these come with every install of SketchUp, the tile, water, metal. These are actually .skm files that live within the library that then loads every time you launch SketchUp. So when you download a material from 3D Warehouse, you're basically getting the same kind of files that load with the default browser. I know it looks a little bit different on Windows than it does on Mac, but the functionality should be pretty much the same. So I'm gonna search, let's say, I, let's pretend I don't know where SKM files are stored. So I'm gonna search for an SKM. And it should, if I scroll down to show all in my finder, and then I don't know, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna pick one right here. You're gonna see that it shows up in library, application support, SketchUp, and shipped materials or materials. I'm actually just gonna open up this main folder here, SketchUp. And then if I scroll all the way over, you can see here that there's a folder that I've already created just to save time. I created this folder just now called Ruins and all of those materials that I just downloaded, those SKMs, I just dragged them and dropped them in here. So you can see that I actually did it twice with JPEGs and SKMs. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to see if it would load the JPEGs and it doesn't. So that was just a little test uh, just to make sure that what I was thinking 
um, actually functions the way that I thought it would. So only the SKMs will load. So if you drag those SKMs and put them here, then the next time you start SketchUp, so you may need to quit it and then open it back up again. But the next time you start SketchUp, you're going to see either the new folder, the new, if you don't put them in a subfolder, you'll just see the materials. But if you create a subfolder like I did called ruins, then those will show up. The cool thing about that now, now that's assuming I want them to show up for every model that I work on. Like this is something that I know I'm going to use a lot. And maybe it's not ruins necessarily, but maybe I'm pulling just the stone textures from the ruins and I'm putting them in a new folder called stone or the grass. So if I come over here to my materials browser, and you can see that these are all the default materials folders, but there's a new one called ruins that wasn't there earlier. And then these are the materials that I downloaded from a 3D warehouse. And there they are, they're ready to use. So we're gonna come back to this in just a second because I wanna apply some of these, but I also wanna look at another way to extract some materials. I also wanna put a little asterisk on copying SCAM files into your library. The reason why is because you wanna be careful when you work, when you change anything within sort of your library application support. If you're on PC, it's gonna be under app data, not application support. So if you're not sure, you can just Google it and it'll tell you where to find the SketchUp folder um, on your PC, but it should be under the app data main folder. You just wanna be careful you don't like change anything or you don't delete things because it could sort of create some problems for you. So I wanna say be careful if you're gonna use this method, just make sure you feel comfortable and you know what you're doing. Another way to do it, let's just kind of pretend, hey, I don't need to use these every single time. I don't need them to load with my default library. In this case, I just want the materials. I'm gonna store it locally on say my desktop. Well, you can do that pretty easily. You can just go ahead and export the file, in this case as a 3D model. And there's a few different options. I'm gonna export it to my desktop here. I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm just gonna call this ruins just so that I'm saving. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I don't think I need to do that. You'll see that when you save it as a collada file, which is .dae as its extension, there's an option that's called export texture maps. So I'll just click OK and type in ruins, just in case I want to keep the file. I don't think I need the file. I'm probably just gonna to toss it. I just want the materials, but I'll rename it anyway out of good habits. Click export and just like that, I'll open up my finder, pop over to my desktop and you can see there's a folder here that wasn't there before. It's called ruins. There's also the collada files there as well. So ruins are all there. And in this case, you can see that they are not SKMs. They are JPEGs or PNGs or whatever the original file type was that the person who created this model used. So now in this case, you can't load them like I showed you just a second ago. They won't load in your default library, but you can just keep them on your desktop or on your in a materials folder. And when you're ready to use them, in this case, I'm gonna pop over to say a new model and let me pull those materials back up again. In this case, you just have to do it the old fashioned way. Bring that material in. Once it's into SketchUp, once it's exploded, not exported, exploded, it's ready to use. So you can see the difference there. It's a little slower to have to do it with that multi-step rather than just popping into a subfolder called ruins. And then in this case going bing, 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 bing. And of course, I don't have to import anything. It's gonna show up every single time. So that's it. There's two different ways that you can export materials to use either one at a time and store locally on your hard drive or to download them as SKMs and store them within the SketchUp library materials folder, which then show up in your materials browser and can be used just in one click at any time, they'll load every single time you load SketchUp. So whichever method you feel comfortable with or whichever one you think might be more useful to you, obviously go that route. And of course, as always, 
If you've got a different way to do it, or something I said doesn't work for you, or you want to learn a little bit more, let us know your thoughts in the comments because we read them and respond to them, and we enjoy keeping the conversation going there. So as always, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, and thanks, and see you next time.